If you've ever been in an elementary level science camp, you've probably done a Mentos geyser. It's the one where you drop the Mentos in the Diet Coke and like bubbles go everywhere. Like it's cool when you're a third grader and it's still a little bit cool when you're a high schooler, but it becomes mundane after a little while because it's done so often. And I already have some things about the Mentos geyser that I don't really like. First of all, most people call it an experiment. An experiment is something that has not been done or has not been shown or proven. What we're really doing when we do a Mentos geyser, it's already been done, so it's what we call a demonstration. Number two is whenever a science camp does it, most of the time they don't explain why it happens. They just do it and be like, it's science. Yay, kind of, but we don't understand. That's the topic we're getting into in today's video. Basically, we're just gonna explain how the Mentos Geyser works. Basically, Mentos geysers do their thing because a bunch of CO2 bubbles escape the liquid at a, in a very short period of time. That's why immediately after a Mentos geyser, the soda is mostly flat. Under normal circumstances, with a closed bottle, CO2 will escape the liquid, but slowly. I'll explain why it does it in the first place a little bit later, but for now, we just know that Bubbles sometimes form and they go to the top, but not at the rate at which they do when you drop Mentos in. Ignoring the little bubbles that escape now and then, the CO2 is infused in the liquid. Since the base of the drink is almost always water, the CO2 is dissolved actually in the water and then other ingredients are added to make it taste like whatever the manufacturer wants. The CO2 escapes when it can form bubbles, because the bubbles can rise to the top rather than just being dissolved in the water. To do this, the CO2 has to find a place to go into where the water can't, and then it can collect and form bubbles with other CO2 molecules, and then rise to the top. This happens when there are tiny microscopic divots in contact with the fluid. I'm saying fluid because it's not always water, Sometimes it's Diet Coke, sometimes it's Diet Pepsi, sometimes it's Sprite. It doesn't really matter as long as it's carbonated. Some sodas work better than others, but that's a topic for a different video. In a normal plastic bottle, there are only a few of these little divots where the CO2 can go into and then form a bubble. That's why the bubbles escape slowly and it goes flat very slowly. However, Mentos, they're very bumpy. They have a bunch of these little divots where the CO2 can get in and then the CO2 forms bubbles and it can rise to the top and it makes a huge mess because it happens so quickly. There are enough divots for nearly all of the CO2 to get in there, make bubbles and get out. In extremely zoomed in pictures of Mentos, you can actually see these little craters. So I'm gonna do a quick recap before we end the video. Mentos have a bunch of little pock marks that allow carbon dioxide that's infused or dissolved in water to go into them and then form bubbles and escape, making the geyser that we all love.